Hey, Macklemore, can we go cap shopping? I mean, no, not really go cap shopping. That already happened. Kasperi Kapanen has already been traded. If you didn't check out our video that we made yesterday about the trade, then I highly recommend you do that. We go over every single detail of the trade between the Penguins and the Maple Leafs. But in this video, what we're doing is reviewing a little bit of the cap shopping that actually went on, according to Pierre Lebrun, before the Toronto Maple Leafs ultimately got a package that they felt was enough for their 24-year-old Finnish winger. So, taking a look at this, this is cap shopping. Taking a look at teams that were in the market, or at least offered a Kasperi Kapanen before the Penguins deal, which the Maple Leafs said yes to, actually came around. The source here is Pierre Lebrun's article on The Athletic. The Maple Leafs accomplished their goal in recouping a first rounder for Kasperi Kapanen. Now, we're not going to be screenshotting text from this article because it is on The Athletic, it is paid for content, so we're not going to be leaking that, but if you do have The Athletic, I'll leave a link in the description to this article so you can go ahead and read it. What we're going off of, though, is a tweet posted onto Twitter by NHL News, at Puck Report 2, that pretty much sums up everything that Pierre Lebrun said in his article and condenses it into two tweets. This is the tweet right here. According to sources, the Toronto Maple Leafs spoke to the New Jersey Devils, the Nashville Predators, the Anaheim Ducks, the Minnesota Wild, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Carolina Hurricanes about Kasperi Kapanen. LeBron adds, the Leafs tried to recoup their 13th overall pick from the Hurricanes. Their goal was to get a first and a prospect in any deal, regardless of the team, and while the Canes had interest in Kapanen, they weren't going to pay that price. Now, I want to start off on the last tweet that we just read first, because when I read that the Carolina Hurricanes were interested in Kasperi Kapanen, my immediate thought was, yeah, of course. Like, obviously they are, right? You know, his father was a former Carolina Hurricanes 50-point scorer throughout the early 2000s and the late 90s, so there certainly is a connection there between Kapanen and the Hurricanes, but... For context, the Maple Leafs were indeed trying to get a first-round pick back, their first-round pick specifically from the Carolina Hurricanes. We went over this in the trade video yesterday, but if you hadn't been caught up to speed, the reason the Carolina Hurricanes have the Maple Leafs 13th overall pick is because the Leafs traded Marlowe and that pick to Carolina so that Carolina could buy out Marlowe. Therefore, leaving a little bit of extra money on the cap because buyouts in the NHL aren't free, so the Hurricanes would take on that salary and in return the Leafs say, okay, you're doing us a favor, here, take our first round pick. It's supposed to be a high pick because the Leafs were supposed to be in the playoffs, but no, it wasn't, it was 13th overall. So, with the Kasperi Kapanen trade in mind, it appeared that they did indeed want to get that pick back, as well as a prospect, and I would imagine that there would probably be some other working pieces as well that they probably would have wanted to recuperate too, such as either an NHL forward on an expiring deal that they can sign to replace Kapanen's spot in the lineup with, or a few other things as well. We had a whole bunch of stuff with the Pittsburgh trade. We do know, though, that the Pittsburgh trade ended up giving the Maple Leafs that first-round pick and that prospect. The first-round pick was 15th overall. It was Pittsburgh's pick from this year. It's literally two picks after the Leafs' own pick this year. And Philip Hallander is a very good NHL prospect, certainly an underrated guy in my opinion. Plus, you also have Rodriguez, who is an expiring contract, and the defenseman in the AHL as well. So, there was a lot that the Leafs were looking for, if you consider that the Pittsburgh Penguins offer was the one that they accepted. Then it really does appear that any other offer that any team could have had that wasn't as stacked as what Jim Rutherford gave Kyle Dubas would not have been accepted. So, going over the other teams over here that could have been in that conversation. The New Jersey Devils, imagine if they acquired a Kasperi Kapanen, adding that kind of speed to a Jack Hughes wing. That may be what he ultimately needs to really get over that hump and start finding NHL consistency and success. New Jersey is an interesting one because they have literally three first round picks this year. They have their own, which is seventh overall. They have the Vancouver first, which is going to be either 20th overall, or it has the potential of going up to 28th, 29th, 30th, or 31st overall, depending on how well they do in the playoffs. 
Then you have the Arizona Coyotes pick as well that was sent over in the Taylor Hall trade. Yeah, that one's just over there. It's 18th overall, so it certainly is quite a valuable pick, considering it was only a few picks removed from the pick that they did end up getting. But it makes complete sense to me that the New Jersey Devils were a team that would not want to part with a prospect in the same way that the Penguins did. Just taking a look at the values of the teams that were involved, Pittsburgh wanted to improve their team up front, they don't care about the future, they want to win another one while Crosby, Malkin, and Latang are still here and still kicking. So sacrifice a few of your future pieces, get some good assets now, it makes sense for what they wanted to do. You could debate as to whether or not that's smart and all, but again, the philosophy does make sense. New Jersey's not a team that has the luxury to do that, in my opinion, so it makes sense that they refused. Same thing can go with the Anaheim Ducks and the Chicago Blackhawks. These two teams, not really all too great in the standings, and who are also somewhat building towards the future. It's easy to say with Chicago that you probably shouldn't be doing that because you still got Patrick Kane, but let's face it, ever since Kane and Taves got those contracts, they haven't really been the same team that they've been when they were winning Stanley Cups every other year. So even though you could argue that the philosophy of getting a good NHL established forward in Kapanen in Chicago would have been a positive thing, their first round pick, which was 17th overall, and a prospect, that's kind of hefty. For Anaheim, they're an even worse team than Chicago was in the standing, so I can understand they're building towards the future for sure. The Nashville Predators are in a weird limbo, where they were kind of supposed to be better in the postseason, but they really weren't. They dropped off, they ended up getting eliminated in the qualifying round by Arizona, and if they wanted to add some speed, then I think it would have been nice to have that. It's just, Nashville has so little prospects in general that I think trying to take away a prospect from Nashville is like trying to take away the last piece of gum in your high school math class. It just doesn't happen because there's so little, and people want it so... Yeah, it's a little bit tough. Furthermore, we have the Minnesota Wild, who are probably in the most interesting spot over here, because they're that team that, in my opinion, they have really good prospects. And in my opinion, they would indeed want to build upon their team for the short-term future. So in my opinion, the idea of a Minnesota Wild trade with Kapanen, it honestly made sense in theory. It's just, if they wanted a first round pick and the Wild were going to give up their ninth overall pick this season, yeah, that's quite a valuable pick, man. So I don't really know if that's enough to justify a Kapanen return, especially added on with a prospect. Imagine an Alexander Hovanov, who was the top QMJHL point producer, who's not named Lafreniere and the ninth overall pick for Kasperi Kapanen. That's not really too good of a trade from the Minnesota Wild point of view, just saying. And I get that the Pittsburgh trade wasn't really a good assessment of value from their side either, but the philosophy makes sense. For Minnesota, it's not like you're in a position to be close to winning, even if you want to be winning. So there isn't really that same incentive to go out and make an invaluable trade for your team to help your short-term future. And besides, they already have a lot of good prospects. They're building towards the future. Minnesota with Matthew Boldy, not to mention the best prospect in the WHL, Adam Beckman, the best in the QMJHL, not named Lafreniere, Alexander Hovanov, like we mentioned, the best prospect in the KHL and Kaprizov. There are a lot of great things coming over in Minnesota. So those are the teams that we spoke about here today. It is Carolina, it is New Jersey, it is Anaheim, Chicago, Minnesota, and the Nashville Predators. All of these teams were, according to Pierre Lebrun, teams that the Maple Leafs shopped Kapanen to before ultimately getting an offer from Pittsburgh that they thought was good enough and that they would actually accept. To me, the most interesting part of it is taking a look and trying to speculate as to what could have been included in some of these trades with other teams. Because if the Maple Leafs were offering, there's no doubt in my mind that Kyle Dubas probably got a returned offer or two. And what those offers could have included, hey, we may never know ever. But it's just fun to take a look at it, try to speculate, and just try to understand the fit as to why a trade like this could work on either side. But ultimately, though, it's Pittsburgh that wins. I mean, I guess you could say they win because they get Kapanen, but at the same time, they're the team that shells out a top 20 pick in the first round for Kapanen, which you can debate is a good thing or not. But talk to me in the comments below what you think about this idea here with these other teams that were also apparently in the market for Kapanen. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and bye.